The exact date and place of birth of Catherine Howard is unknown but many historians consider it to be around 1524 in Lambeth, London. Catherine was the granddaughter of the powerful Thomas Howard, 2nd Duke of Norfolk, but her father, Lord Edmund Howard, was poor as he was the third son of the Duke. At this point in history only the eldest son would inherit the family estate. Her mother, Joyce Culpepper, would have six children, including Catherine and Catherine would have around four step-siblings. Soon after her Catherine's mother, died in around 1528, her father, placed her into the care of his new wife, Agnes Howard, the Dowager Duchess of Norfolk, along with some of her other younger siblings. The Dowager Duchess would place Catherine between Chesworth House in Horsham, Sussex and Norfolk House in Lambeth. These houses were used by poorer nobles who were unable to send their children to be trained by the aristocratic households of European nobles. The Dowager Duchess would use these establishments as she has little interest in bringing up her stepchildren whilst attending court. Catherine character would become influenced by older girls in the care of the Dowager Duchess, who would allow men into their sleeping areas at night, and entertain them with food and wine stolen from the household kitchens. The education Catherine would receive would be poor compared to her contemporaries at court, but she was able to read and write which would be considered impressive at this time. Around 1536, Catherine would receive music lessons from Henry Mannox, an unmarried man in his late thirties. Catherine would begin a relationship with Mannox, but the full extent of the relationship remains unclear. The only evidence of the extent of their relationship is from during her adultery inquisition when she was married to Henry VIII. Catherine would confess she had had a sexual relationship with Mannix but no intercourse had taken place. In 1538, Catherine would return to the Dowager Duchess's home in Lambeth, severing her relationship with Mannix in the process. Soon after, Catherine would begin a relationship with her stepmother's secretary, Frances Deerham. The relationship seemed deep as they would refer to each other as husband and wife, and Catherine would look after Deerham's money when he went away from home. The relationship was ended by the Dowager Duchess, when she discovered the relationship. There had been rumours that Catherine had agreed a pre-contract of marriage on his return from a trip to Ireland but there has been no evidence to support this claim. Catherine's introduction to court was arranged by her uncle, the Duke of Norfolk, when she was found a place in the household of Henry VIII's fourth wife, Anne of Cleves. The Howards have always been an ambitious family seeking power and influence at court and in Catherine's youth and beauty, they probably saw an opportunity as the king showed very little interest in his new wife, and thought Catherine may present a way of catching Henry's attention. If the Howards' plan was to attract the king's attention it soon worked, as within months at court, Henry was sending gifts to the young Catherine in the form of luxurious cloths and land. As Henry infatuation grew with Catherine, so did the standing of the Duke of Norfolk's family at court. As Henry infatuation grew with Catherine, so did the standing of the Duke of Norfolk's family at court. At the same time Thomas Cromwell would be arrested for treason. The age gap between the couple was over 30 years with Catherine still a teenager and Henry being 48. The age gap between the couple was over 30 years with Catherine still a teenager and Henry being 48. On the very same day, Thomas Cromwell, Henry long-serving and trusted member of court, who had dramatically fallen from power was executed at the Tower of London. Their marriage would not be made public until over a week later on 8 August 1540. Being too young to take a role in matters of state, Catherine was allowed to live a carefree life. In August 1540, 
Catherine and Henry would take the opportunity of reinsurgence of the plague in London to take a honeymoon through Reading and Buckinghamshire. As winter grew, so did Henry's bad mood and depression, most like caused from a leg ulcer. He grew paranoid of his counsellors at court and grew to regret the execution of Thomas Cromwell. It's been alleged that Catherine during her marriage to Henry, was romantically involved with one of King's courtiers, Thomas Culpepper. Their relationship may have begun from a time when Catherine was maid of honor for Anne of Cleves. Reports indicate that they pair were meeting secretly in the spring of 1541. Perhaps, Catherine had grown weary of the King's dark mood during the winter months and sought some distraction. These meetings were being arranged by Lady Rochford, one of Catherine's ladies-in-waiting. Lady Rochford was the widow, of Anne Boleyn's executed brother George Berlin. George Berlin was also the cousin to Catherine. As the rumors grew, so did people who wished to take advantage of the situation. Blackmailers would be given favors or position at courts in order to silence what they have seen of Catherine's sexual behavior whilst she was living at Lambeth. One witness, Mary Lassells, interrogated by Thomas Cranmer, the Archbishop of Canterbury claimed that she had sexual relationships whilst under the care of her the Dowager Duchess. Thomas Cranmer, a Protestant Archbishop, would use this case to fight against his rivals, the Roman Catholic Norfolk family. Soon, Lady Rochford was interrogated by Cranmer, and under the fear of torture she testified how she would cover for Catherine to make her secret rendezvous with Culpepper. Also, Cranmer would find a love letter from Catherine to Culpepper in Culpepper's quarters. The king would find out of the allegations against Catherine of the 7th of November 1541, All Saints' Day, whilst in prayer at the Royal Chapel. Cranmer would lead the delegation to question and arrest a visibly distressed Catherine. Such was her state, care would be taken to what items were left in her possession in case she tried to commit suicide. Following the arrest of Catherine Howard, much effort went into proving that Catherine had a pre-contract of marriage during her relationship with Francis Derham. If such a contract existed, it would enable Henry to simply annul their marriage and banish her from court to live a life of poverty. But throughout all her interrogations Catherine refused to acknowledge or provide evidence that such a contract existed. On 23 November 1541, Catherine would be formally removed of being the Queen of England, return the ring from Anne of Cleves which Henry bestowed on her to give her the regal and lawful rights, and imprisoned throughout the winter of that year at Sion Abbey in Middlesex. She would never see Henry VIII again. Both Culpepper and Derham would be found guilty of treason on 1 December 1541. Fourteen days later, Culpepper would be executed by beheading on 10 December 1541 at the Tyburn in London. Deerham would be executed on the same day being hung, drawn and quartered. Following custom at the time, both Deerham's and Culpepper's heads would be placed on spikes on London Bridge. The Duke of Norfolk managed to distance himself, returning to his ancestral seat in Norfolk and followed up with a letter of apology to the King. The son of the Duke of Norfolk, Henry Howard, Earl of Surrey would still remain at court as one of the King's favourites. Other members of the Norfolk family were not so lucky and were imprisoned for life after being found guilty of treason. During this time Henry VIII fell into a Great Depression only relieved for his indulgences of women and food. On 7 February 1542, Parliament would make it law that failure for a queen consort to disclose her sexual history within 20 days of marriage to be a treasonable act. This law would be made to be retrospective as well and Catherine was charged with treason without trial. 
Catherine would be moved by barge to the Tower of London on London on 10 February 1542. Her execution would be scheduled for Monday 13 February 1542 at 7am. It is reported that Catherine asked for the block to be sent to her cell the night before her execution in order to practice how to lay her head on the block. As planned, Catherine would be executed by beheading on Monday 13 February 1542, she would die as the Queen of Henry VIII as he had never formally annulled the marriage. Henry did not attend the execution. Following her execution, Francis I of France would write a letter of sympathy to Henry. Catherine's lady-in-waiting, Lady Rochford, would be executed shortly after at Tower Green, in the Tower of London. Catherine would join her cousins, Anne and George Boleyn in an unmarked grave in the chapel of St. Peter ad Vincula, and the only commemoration for her now is a plaque on the west wall of the chapel.